Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 60. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So this is now part 60 of the series, so I suppose that means we are about five years into the series. Technically speaking, we had a few videos named something different uh, before I started calling them this, but we've been doing this for somewhere between five and six years. And the whole idea is we just want to know what the quote unquote fair value of the asset class is just based on a historical fit to all prior data. And then we want to know where the current market cap of the entire asset class is with respect to the quote unquote fair value. So in this case, the fair value logarithmic regression trend line is coming in at around $3.994 trillion. The total cryptocurrency asset class right now is at about $3.266 trillion. This represents an undervaluation of approximately 18.23%. Now, we've seen this many times before where the asset class just stays below that fair value logarithmic regression trend line. Um, and as we have stated previously, as long as the asset class is below the red line, then the expectation, in my view, would be that Bitcoin should continue to outperform most of the rest of the asset class. And therefore, we should see altcoins continue to bleed to Bitcoin. We've seen that happen in other cycles as well. Obviously, there's remnants. So we can talk about monetary policy and whatnot and how that might affect things. But essentially, what you're witnessing, right, the phase of the cycle that, we, that we're in and that we've really been in for the last three to four years is where Bitcoin has gone higher. And during that time, the asset class has been slowly trending higher. But the reason it's not aggressively trending above the quote unquote fair value is because the altcoin market is just simply not joining in, right? So there's a lot of this, a lot of this money uh, that's coming into Bitcoin through ETFs and and this, you know and and various um, you know treasury balances, um, Bitcoin treasury companies and whatnot. Um, this is obviously some liquidity coming into Bitcoin. And, and you can see that Bitcoin has been doing pretty well over the last few years. Uh, if you go look at all Bitcoin pairs to just kind of give you an idea of how they're doing with respect to Bitcoin, right? All coins are just continuing to bleed. So what you're seeing essentially is the Bitcoin rallies are, are supported by ETF flows. They're, they're supported by companies adding Bitcoin to their reserve um, or to their treasury. They're supported by people that are just DCAing Bitcoin. And then also the Bitcoin rally has been supported by people converting altcoins to Bitcoin. And so when you have a situation like that, you have basically the, the asset class as a whole trending higher, primarily because of only a few cryptocurrencies, in this case, namely Bitcoin. So Bitcoin continues to carry the to do the heavy lifting while everything else, to some degree, is just kind of supporting it <laughs> to supporting Bitcoin. Um, and, and so what you'll notice is that, you know, according to this, the asset is the asset class just, just below the fair value logger and the regression trend line. If you take the percent difference between the total cryptocurrency market cap and the fair value, you get a chart that looks like this. Um, and you can see there's actually been plenty of times throughout history where, where the asset class will go above the fair value and then just simply go right back down. And so far it looks like this time has not, you know, it has, it hasn't even happened yet. Uh, since December, right? So we saw it occur in March of 2024. We saw it revisit those levels of overvaluation in December of 2024. We haven't actually returned to seeing the asset class at those valuations. Now, obviously, total market cap um, has is not that much lower than it was. But remember, the idea is that the asset class is always growing. Uh, therefore, the fair value... Um, should theoretically always be increasing. Now, obviously, you can get macro events that that cause things to change, right? You had the uh, the pandemic crash, um, which led to a, a pretty big drop uh, in a relatively short period of time as it was hugging that fair value. But you know, for the most part, this cycle has been 
um, just following this line, right? Just just below the line, we saw something similar happen in the 2015, uh, 2017 cycle. Back then, it went durably overvalued in in May. We haven't seen that yet this cycle. And I, I, th I continue to think that one of the re two reasons, two primary reasons we haven't seen that this cycle, the main reason I think is because of monetary policy. I think interest rates are, are probably still a little bit too high to support um, a durable altcoin rally. It doesn't mean you can't have altcoin rallies. I just don't think you're going to see a durable altcoin rally that leads to overvaluations that last for as long as they have in prior cycles until you get interest rates lower and probably until you get quantitative tightening uh, over with. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I do think this cycle has been great at just test uh, teaching people good investing principles, right? Sometimes it's better to to go, you know, to stick with the, um, you know, the horse that's moving, but not necessarily, you know, you're not necessarily expecting a 100x move. But if you keep putting all your money on these, you know, these 100x gems, as people like to call them, and then they just keep on not going anywhere. And, and this, I think, has taught a lot of good investing principles uh, this market cycle. So uh, we'll continue to track this. We'll do this at the beginning of every month, right? It's July 1st now. So the next one will be uh, probably just a month from now in August. And we'll see if anything's changed. One of the interesting things, though, that you can see is that the area that the asset class, you know, found support um, back over here, right, in September or August of 2024 is in the same level that it found support at in April of 2025 in terms of the extension from the fair value. So that level has come into play a number of times. You can see in the 2016, 2017 cycle, there is the same level here that it just kind of kept going back to until eventually it had enough fuel to go durably overvalued for a year or two. Um, maybe this cycle, it's it's right around a valuation or an undervaluation of like 30% or something. You can see it even went lower once upon a time, like 40%. Um, or or more below the fair value, but that was way back in, in 2023. My general thought process uh, is that the asset class will eventually uh, get to approximately 10 trillion, plus or minus a few trillion. And as we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder, what's a few trillion dollars among friends? <laughs>